So, as you might have seen, there's this viral post of Mark Zuckerberg. It was supposed to be a celebratory post for Instagram reaching 500 million monthly active users. But it looks like he didn't have much time to prepare for this picture, as the background shows something rather concerning. If you look really closely, you can see that Zuckerberg's MacBook webcam is actually covered by a piece of tape. Now, you might be inclined to think that maybe he was just posing in front of one of his employees' computers, but some more evidence would suggest otherwise. You see, a couple of months before this incident, Mark had done a Facebook Live touring his workspace, and guess what? He would show off the exact same desk with a MacBook. So it's highly likely that this was Mark's desk and MacBook, meaning that he does indeed tape over his webcam. And let's not forget, this is not some flat earth conspiracy theorist. This is Mark Zuckerberg, the founder and CEO of the third largest internet company on the planet, Facebook, which currently stands at a market cap of $1 trillion. So does Mark know something that we don't? Or is he just being paranoid like the rest of us? Well. Let's find out. When it comes to taping up webcams, one of the first concerns that comes to mind is hacking. And straight off the bat, the answer to the question of whether webcams can be hacked and used without your knowledge is yes. There is even a silly name for it, camfecting. Likely the most notable example of camfecting is all of the tech support scammer payback YouTubers like Jim Browning. Essentially, what Jim does is hack into scammers' computers to gather evidence about who they are and the people that they've been scamming. And this often includes getting access to not just the individual scammer's webcam and microphone, but the entire building CCTV footage. Jim does this to scare scammers, spread awareness about these guys, and turn them over to the police. Though, the police doesn't really do anything, but that's a whole other story. The bottom line is that Jim is able to access webcams without even scammers noticing. Now, Jim does do this in the name of good, aka he's a white hat hacker. The same cannot be said about most hackers, but how is this even possible in the year 2024? Aren't operating systems and software secure enough to prevent such instances? Well, for the most part, the answer is yes. Though it is possible to hack into an unmodified computer, it's extremely difficult and often requires physical access to the device. With that being said, the real vulnerability is not the computer or OS itself, but rather our use of the computer and OS. For obvious reasons, operating systems are built with the ability to grant various programs with access to your webcam and microphone for legitimate purposes like Zoom meetings and FaceTime. So the easiest way to get access to your webcam is not to write some sort of big brain 200 IQ malicious code, but simply trick you into giving webcam permissions to software that you shouldn't have. And the easiest way to do that is to disguise malware as legitimate software, like Zoom. If you don't download such software from their official websites, it's quite possible that the version you're downloading comes with malware. But now, when you go ahead and grant permissions to Zoom, you would also be granting permissions to the malware. You're probably wondering, how many people are even susceptible to this? Well, it's actually quite a lot of people. Take Android for example. A study of 750,000 Zoom Android users found that over 100,000 of these users didn't get their version from the official Google Play Store. That's over 10% of users, and over the years, this has led to some rather concerning incidents, as was the case with Jared James Abrahams. Throughout 2012 and 2013, Jared would hack into the online accounts and webcams of 100 to 150 women. He would use this access to capture compromising images and videos of these women, and then proceed to blackmail them. One of his victims was his classmate and Miss Teen USA of 2013, Cassidy Wolf, and Jared is just one example. There are dozens of cases like this, and those are just the people who eventually got caught because they pushed the boundaries. There are likely thousands of twisted individuals like this who stay in the shadows and never reveal themselves. So the threat of webcam hacking is definitely legitimate if you're an attractive female or a person of public interest. But hackers may not be the only people who are accessing your webcam, which brings us into the government. Honestly, it feels a bit weird to even talk about this because it does feel like a conspiracy theory. 
the whole idea that the government is watching your every move from the shadows, but at the same time, that's also what they would want us to think. Governments thrive off public trust, so it would be in their best interest that most people blindly trust them and write off such theories as tinfoil hat BS. But honestly, there's actually quite a bit of concerning evidence against the government. For starters, the FBI 100% has the means to access your webcam and monitor you. In fact, the FBI actually admitted to having this technology for several years way back in 2013. With how much more essential technology has become since then, it's safe to say that the FBI has only built upon the surveillance technology over the years. With that being said, the FBI is required to follow strict guidelines and receive warrants before they engage in such activities. So the official narrative is that the FBI has the technology to access webcams, but they only do it if they have the legal authority to do so. But many privacy activists like Sasha don't exactly buy into that narrative. These activists suspect that the FBI and other law enforcement agencies not only use programs like PRISM and Section 702 to spy on crime organizations and wanted criminals, but anyone that they deem suspicious. Sasha claims that the FBI has monitored literally millions of people who haven't committed any crime. And this is one of the main concerns over what's called warrantless surveillance. And he does have some evidence to back up his claims too. Back in 2013, the National Security Agency had a program in place that forced Verizon to collect and turn over all of their phone call data. The government defended these actions by stating that all phone calls were relevant to ongoing investigations. As such, maybe the NSA and FBI also feel that all webcam footage is also relevant to ongoing investigations. Maybe it just takes a few wrong searches to end up on government surveillance for an hour or two. We'll probably never know unless there's a whistleblower or something. But while the US government's use of webcam footage is more ambiguous, it's a lot more black and white when it comes to other countries like China. Luckily for us, China doesn't even try to hide their intentions. They're quite transparent in that they're all for mass surveillance. In fact, China currently has 700 million surveillance cameras, which nearly works out to one camera for every two citizens. They use all of this footage in combination with facial recognition technology to create a sort of social credit system that tries to quantify all of the good deeds and bad deeds that you've done throughout your lifetime. With that sort of grand vision, it really wouldn't be surprising if the CCP is also using laptop and smartphone webcams to monitor their citizens. And it's the same story with Russia and most other authoritarian regimes. But what may be surprising is that it's also starting to become a thing in democratic nations like India. It seems like no country really wants to give up the power and control that comes along with mass surveillance, which brings us into our last suspect, Big Tech. Oftentimes, Big Tech privacy concerns are some of the most documented and publicized, but ironically, when you compare Big Tech privacy intrusion with hackers trying to blackmail and countries trying to surveil, Big Tech data collection suddenly seems to be the most tame. Big Tech isn't trying to blackmail you or catch you doing illegal things. All they really want to do at the end of the day is sell you stuff and make more money. And it turns out that tracking your every move is a very effective way to do exactly that. So does Big Tech watch you through your webcam? Is that why Mark Zuckerberg was covering his webcam? Does Facebook do that? Well, luckily, for the first time in this video, the answer seems to be no. As far as I can tell, Big Tech does not actively monitor your webcam in order to serve you more ads. Google also claims that they don't use content stored in your Drive or Gmail or Photos for ads either. With that being said though, Big Tech does have some controversies regarding the privacy of captured footage. For example, if you have an Amazon or Google camera security system, it may be possible that your footage is accessed by employees and contractors. Usually, this is to troubleshoot issues and train AI systems and is done with explicit written consent from the customers. Obviously, there is still some gray area here, but for the most part, Big Tech, or at least American Big Tech, does not monitor your webcams. They do monitor your webcam microphone though, which shouldn't really be a surprise. If you have any sort of AI assistant enabled, whether it's Google, Siri, or Alexa, they obviously have to be listening at all times. It's hard to find any sort of concrete evidence regarding whether these companies use these recordings for advertising purposes, but there is a lot of anecdotal evidence that you'll find all over the web. 
For example, this guy doesn't own a dog and hasn't recently searched for anything related to dog toys. But shortly after he starts talking about dog toys with his mic on, he starts getting ads about dog toys. So it definitely seems like Google was listening in the situation, though it should be noted that this experiment was done on a YouTube livestream. So it's not conclusive evidence that they're listening when you're not actively using Google services, but it does make it clear that Google and Facebook are listening to optimize ads at least some of the time. As for Chinese big tech, well, it would be in their best interest to not spy through webcams. If they were doing that and it got leaked, well then they're most likely getting banned from a lot of Western countries, which would cut off all streams of data from these countries for companies like TikTok, Timu, and Alibaba. So it would be in their best interest to only collect the data that's listed on their privacy policy. It should be noted though that that's already a crap ton of data. For example, TikTok openly admits to analyzing user uploaded videos, images, and audios to analyze objects in the background and scenery. TikTok also openly admits to collecting biometric data including face prints and voice prints. TikTok then turns around and shares this data with advertising, marketing, and analytics vendors to keep you on the platform for as long as possible and sell you as much crap as possible. But I mean, is that really surprising in 2024? And that brings us back to the question of the day. Should you tape your webcam? Well, ironically, this may actually be one of the few places where you're actually safe from big tech. But you're not safe from hackers and potential government surveillance. As the CEO of Facebook and a person of high interest, Zuckerberg is well aware of these threats, and that's why he tapes his webcam. And while you're probably not as susceptible as Zuckerberg, you might as well do it too, just in case, especially if you don't use a webcam all that often to begin with. Clearly, cybersecurity is still a serious concern, but for some reason, antivirus protection software has somehow become obsolete. Check out this video to learn more, but until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.